Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm teaching horrible cooks how to become fearless in the kitchen. Today, a guy who wants to become a kitchen Casanova. I'm still single, so hopefully cooking lessons from you might help me in the right direction. He goes from pounding out crab cakes. That's not a good situation, Aaron. I just killed my host. <laughs> to making a mouth-watering dessert for ladies' night. My first experience with an oven. Can he sweet talk a room full of women with his new culinary skills? Can I still take it out and melt it? No? We're done with the chocolate. Or will his terrible food keep him single forever? I don't expect any food poisoning tonight. Or we're close <laughs> to the hospital. an adventurous guy who's traveled the world, but he's never learned a thing about cooking. Meet Aaron. I know he has done many different things, traveling. He's just into everything but not cooking. I know you for 10 years and you've never ever cooked. I don't think you can cook at all. I am a terrible cook. Lived in Taiwan for a few months and the room that I was living in had no kitchen. So I would just boil dumplings and that's all I ate for pretty much three months. Still living at home at 36, Aaron's had no reason to learn how to cook. The only two machines I know how to work at home are the microwave and the toaster oven. The microwave is my best friend. Aaron is 36 years old and I think it's really time to learn cooking. I do want to move out pretty soon. If I don't learn how to cook, I'll be single for a long time. So Christine, please help me out. My plan is to tap into Aaron's sense of adventure and make him more courageous in the kitchen. If I can do that, he'll make meals that impress his friends and it might even help him find a woman. Right, Christine, so here you go. Here's my kitchen. A lot of good space to work in here. The favorite machine is probably the microwave. <laughs> okay. Why do you want to learn to cook now? I'm like, still single, so yeah. that's why hopefully cooking lesson from you might help me uh, in the right direction. There is something about a guy that cooks. You go from a zero to like yeah. eight. Extra points. <laughs> Extra there we go. Points there we right go. away. Yeah. How do you feel about seafood? I love seafood. Yeah. All types, you know, a lot of fish, lobster, crab, whatnot. What's probably the scariest thing you've ever tried? Uh, when I was in Beijing, they had actual scorpions like on a scooter. So that was the oh, scariest thing I had. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing's gonna scare me here in the kitchen. Yeah, okay, <laughs> give me a high five on Sounds that good. one. All right. Remember those words. Well, the first step is I need to see you cook by yourself. Okay. And okay. Are you gonna eat that? Yes. You and I both have to taste what you cook. I would like for you to make me your version of a crab cake. Right. All right, let's try this. At least it's not alive. A long time ago, I did do something like this, and I thought, ah, these little buggers can't really hurt me, right? Let them pinch me. Oh, boy. <laughs> you let the crab pinch you. Well, I didn't think it would really hurt. The thing was, like, this small. All right. So. I'm not worrying about going home hungry. I'm worrying about surviving. Standing back when the cleaver goes into action. Garlic is usually good for everything, I think. Big chunks of raw garlic, onion. Awful. Flour and water? What is he making? Wallpaper paste? Yeah, my... <laughs> so now what do I do? Okay, you know what? Let's try this. Oh, it's an eggy crab mess. It looks actually, I think, decent. Not looking forward to this one. <laughs> no? <laughs> Wait a minute. This should work. Ah, there, there we go. It's unbelievable what you made. It's kind of like a hybrid omelet, custard, crab deal. Wash them that way. Oh! Uh, basically, I got a big mouthful of onion. I got a big chunk of garlic and that eggy mess. That's not a good situation, Aaron. Okay, I need to go find the washroom now. <laughs> you try it. I think I just killed my host. 
I wouldn't even feed it to the dogs or my cats. Yeah. Only something I don't like. <laughs> Maybe I'll feed them that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean this up. Okay. And we're gonna make a fantastic crab cake. Okay. That is gonna take you to all new heights. Sounds good. Girls are gonna be lining up. Looking forward to it. My plan for Aaron is to really key in on his love for seafood. I'm gonna take him on a journey and teach him some basics. So in the end, he can make sexy seafood dishes that will impress any woman. So Aaron, we're gonna do this together. First, we're gonna prepare the crab, coat it in breadcrumbs, shake them, and pan fry them on the stove. This is a Dungeness crab, so a small crab about that size. Okay. Just break it up with your hand, so we get nice little sure. even chunks. When you were chopping your garlic, you were cutting them pretty big, so those big chunks of garlic that I bit into were way too much. What we wanna do here is get almost a mince of the garlic so that the flavor goes throughout. Okay, excellent. So now we're gonna add a bit of juice. This little tool here is a reamer. Just gonna help you to squeeze the lime out. I'm gonna give you a little bit of salt. You sprinkle it in. Crack one egg in there. And then I'm gonna add the breadcrumbs. So the breadcrumb is gonna absorb any of the moisture in there. So it's kinda like what you were thinking of with the flour. Yep. And the egg is gonna bind it all together. Press it down again. It's kind of like making yeah. a snowball. Did you mm. did you hit a lot of people with snowballs when you were working? Oh, Come on. Ah. This is your debut on the stove top. That's true, yep. Always want to add away from you so it doesn't splash towards you. And you're going to just put it in that way. Okay, I see. Okay. Just trying to get nice color on the outside yep. and make sure it all holds together. It smells great already. They look awesome. Wow. It's like two different dishes. Watch this. Edible food without the microwave. Unbelievable. It's the sweetness of the crab, yeah. a little bit of saltiness, and then that citrus note is coming through to me. When you see other people eating it and they enjoy your food, like that, it's just, it's priceless. So now that you've got your feet wet, are you ready to get out of the kitchen and have a little adventure? Let's do it. Eat your crab cakes. Great. You're going to need it. For sure. <laughs> coming up, Aaron finds himself in a pinch as he learns how to prepare lobster. What did the crab do? Uh, oh. And later, Aaron attempts dessert for a restaurant full of ladies. The girls are gonna slap you because they have no chocolate. 36 slaps, eh? Aaron's a single guy who just can't cook. The favorite machine is probably the microwave. But he really wants to make great meals so he can hook any woman's heart. I'm still single, so cooking lesson from you might help me uh -huh. in the right direction. I'm teaching him some fabulous seafood dishes. Oh, they look Awesome. We started with crab cakes. Wow. And now the next step on Aaron's seafood journey is lobster. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Christine. How are you doing? It's Good nice to, to see you. Hi, Aaron. Hi. How are you? I'm Patrick. Nice to meet you. Come on over, get your aprons on. Let's go. We can start working on the lobsters. OK. If you're going to boil some lobster, first off, you want to salt your water. Because if you bring your lobster into a plain water situation, the salts will leach out of the meats and get very tough meat. And then what you want to do is you want to take a couple lemons. It flavors up your water a little bit more. At this point, you'll want to hold your lobsters up like this. Have you you've held you, you held this guy before, yeah? Uh, no, I didn't. I think you should try. Take it like this. <laughs> hold okay. it like this. Right. Yeah, good. Excellent. Yeah. Just hold that for a minute. So what we do here, if we're good and the lobsters are into it. Yeah, I learned my lesson before yeah. the hard way with a crab. Did you? I'm with a crab, with a small crab. crab. So it's okay, yeah, it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I got one too. Here. Yeah? <laughs> Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> What's, what, what did the crab do? Oh, uh, it kind of hurt me. He, he wants an autograph. Can you no, hold it's this okay. One? No, really, it's okay. No, 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 no I'd rather hold this one. Just this one. Oh, oh, oh. Just like that. Dude. There you go. Okay, excellent. Okay, so, things. when you're doing everything, you would just want to come down. Back right. To the okay, oh, all right, sure. You want to take the bands off this one? Here. You'll feel better with the big knife in your hand, yeah. I'm sure. It's yeah. excellent. Yeah, well, away from you, that's it. really yeah, that's good. Right. Good. But you're pretty good with the cleaver, Aaron. I saw you earlier on. Yeah, but that's a cleaver on, what was it, like, food that doesn't move? I'm so surrounded by knives and claws here, man. This is kind of like work hazard here a little bit. And the hot water here, too. Watch the hot water. Right, there we go. Hey. Oh, dude. Okay, okay. All right, okay. Sorry. I know you have a big knife. That's okay. I got that. No problem. Oh, this is like my first day here, too. Which way do you put the lobster in the, in the water now? By the tail? No, you boot it head first. We just go like this, and in they go. Okay. So that one's yours. Sure. No, you have to hold he's, it like he's still this. Moving, though, right? you know? No, he's so, not. He's okay. Not, don't worry about it. Just like any way doesn't matter. Don't first, throw it. Head first. Head first. Don't Wait. throw it. Okay, now. Wait now. Wait now. I actually love lobster. My friends have made it, so I watched them making it. There's no rocket science to it. That's what I thought. But wow. All right, these kids are done. You have to take it out. And you're of not going to help me out. I'm not going to be here when you're in front of your girlfriend. If you know what I mean. Careful, they, they might snap at you still. 
Grab both, rip them off. Yep, excellent. So you do like this. See that? Or, oh yeah. And, and then rock it down. I'll put a lemon in there. And it's just that easy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Great. Seafood, for me, I always thought it was a harder food to kind of cook. And I'm a lot more comfortable now, and I'm just looking forward to really putting these skills to, you know, test in the future. Okay, Aaron, so we got two cooked lobsters that we're going to take with us. Patrick, it's been amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything. It's nice to meet you as well. Thank you very much. Now we're going to take these lobsters back home to Aaron's place and make lobster capellini. Ooh la la. So, Aaron, let's continue your seafood journey. We're going to take that lobster and make a beautiful, creamy lobster capellini. This is going to be a little take on a French classic cream sauce, okay, okay? but really fast. Sure. So, a teeny bit of butter is going to go in there okay. over a nice high heat. We're going to do a little side by side chopping. Okay, yeah. A couple of shallots go all the way down. Okay. I have a feeling mine's going to be a bit different than yours. This is a bulb of fennel. This has kind of a delicate licorice flavor. Okay. I'm going to put just the lobster claws in here and the meat sure. just to get a bit of color on that. Okay. This is also going to introduce the flavor of the lobster into the sauce. So I'm just getting these guys to swirl in here. Mm. Take those shallots, drop them in here. Sure. This is 35% cream. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to give this that silkiness. Okay. Now we put the lobster back in the sauce. Our pasta's ready, and we're going to put it directly into the pan without straining it. See that little bit of pasta water that's there? That's going to add some creaminess. Now you're going to go in there and just toss it around as gently as you can. Before, I used to just use a microwave, but now I have a whole new love now for the stove top. Yeah, yeah. quickly and oh, gently. Quickly. That's okay. the bigger All right. challenge. Okay. All right, okay. And I'll try not to drool while you're doing that. <laughs> I see some serious dates in your future. <laughs> Coming up, can Aaron get it together to make a complicated dessert for a room full of women? They're ready for dessert in 10 minutes. Can we negotiate 15? And later, does Aaron's seafood dinner leave him swimming in praise or fishing for compliments? Aaron's a bachelor who thinks that learning to cook is the key to making him a great catch. If boyfriends know how to cook, it's a big plus. So I'm teaching him how to cook fabulous meals that'll make any woman fall for him, hook, line, and sinker. This is your debut on the stovetop. That's true. We started with delectable crab cakes. Wow, amazing. Learn to prepare lobster. I'm not gonna be here when you're in front of your girlfriend, if you know what I mean. And now we're making a sexy lobster capellini. See how I'm twisting the plate? Okay. I'm gonna take that little lobster tail. A little bit of chervil. Nice. Mmm. Wow, this is great. Dig in, seriously, <laughs> give it a shot, give it a shot, yeah. Wow. That's so, really good. It's amazing. I think lobster and cream, on a scale of 1 to 10, rates a 15. I think now it's time to get out of the kitchen again. Okay. And have you faced your biggest challenge so far. Really? And there might be some ladies involved. Okay. And you're gonna be involved too, right? You better help me out here though, you gotta scare me a little bit now. And now I'm taking Aaron on a detour from our seafood journey. Because ladies love seafood, but we love dessert even more. Okay, Aaron, in a couple of hours, this room is gonna be filled with ladies. Okay. So this is your opportunity to impress them with a handmade dessert made by you. Oh, okay, all right, with you. It's your challenge, you're making it, and you have two hours to do it. You're kidding. Okay, all right. Hi, Therese. Hi, Christine. How are you? Nice Good. to see you. Good. This is Aaron. Hi. Hello, Aaron. Nice to meet you. This is Therese. Nice to meet you. So just to let you know what's going to happen this evening, we have 36 women upstairs. I'm going to feed them dinner, and you are going to feed them dessert. Oh, and you trust me already, eh? Are you up for it? Yeah, sure. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Thank sounds you so good. much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay, Aaron. You are making a lime souffle tart with a coconut graham cracker crust and a little chocolate dip strawberries. I can't even cook for one person in like five hours. I'm gonna cook 36 people. Start on the crust. Okay, pour this right in. That smells good. Now with the hands. I gotta mix this with my hands? Now remember when we were making our crab cakes? Yep. Kind of molding them? This is yep. gonna be very similar to that. Okay. We wanna make sure that these shells don't crack because if they crack, yeah. then... That's an angry woman upstairs, right? <laughs> yeah, not good, not good. Okay, all right. We don't want it to be too thick. Okay. We press down. Oh, we got 36 of these, eh? 
Got to do 36 of these, exactly. Wow. You keep at that? OK, sounds good. This is going to a lot longer than I thought. Aaron, how are we doing here? Um, pretty slow, pretty slow, pretty slow. Really? Hi, guys. So everyone is here. When are their mains going out? In about five, 10 minutes. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> it's inevitable, no matter how much time you have in the kitchen, you always run out of it. This crust is quite finicky. OK, we got to get these in the oven, because they got to cook once. Yeah. And then they're going to cook a second time with the custard in it. My first experience with an oven. Now you're moving to the custard. See these limes? Yep. You're going to do a whole lot of juicing. I need to get these out of the oven and to cool them. Once you've got all that lime juice, whisk it into our base, okay. beat our egg whites, and fold it all together. And okay. then pour it back into those tart shells and get them back in the oven. All that in 25 minutes. Cooled, oh garnished, presented. Oh, boy. Let's yep. start making the whipped cream for the garnish. Back it up. Yeah, yeah, give it a, give it a Hi. go. Hi. Hey, Therese. So they're ready for dessert in 10 minutes. How's it going here? Can we negotiate 15? OK, I'll see what I can do. OK, we'll try. OK, so we have 15 minutes. Yeah, we're totally behind. All right, so I'm going to get some chocolate on. Can we leave this going, or? Yeah, keep that going. We want that to be nice and firm. Anytime you're going to melt chocolate, make sure the, this is absolutely clean. Okay. If you put any water in there, the whole thing is going to seize up, OK? okay? Some of the tarts cracked and the filling leaked, so they're sticking in the molds. Now they're getting mangled as we try to plate them. Uh, what should we do now? If they taste great, we can fix the presentation. It tastes really good. It tastes really good. So I say, let's plate it. Let's make it look great. Take that pot there, put a little bit of water in the bottom, and we're going to start melting the chocolate. So it seemed like it was a disaster waiting to happen, so I was like, you know, we just got to stay positive and just make the best of it. So put that pot on the burner and bring the water to a boil. Right. And then... This bowl of chocolate yeah. is supposed to sit on top ah. and melt with the gentle steam of this. Can we still take it out and still melt it? No. We're done with the chocolate. These lime souffle tarts aren't really working. They taste great, but they don't look so hot. And I thought maybe we could save them with a little killer presentation, but Aaron just ruined the chocolate. OK, let, let's fix the chocolate if leave we can. For now, then? Yeah, yeah. Leave, that, leave that on for now. Sure. OK, so if you add even a little bit of water to melt the chocolate, immediately it clumps and seizes. Now, since the chocolate isn't melted, we might be able to save it. Turn it into a sauce instead of like a chocolate dip, which is what we were trying to do. So we're going to put it over low heat. When it's melted, we'll know if it's turned into a sauce okay. or if the girls are going to slap you because they have no chocolate. 36 slaps, eh? 36 slaps. So go back right. to your whipped cream. Give that a good. Let's come over here. Okay. I think you got very lucky with the sauce, but let's strain it and be sure. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of whipped cream, strawberry. Okay. Take a little chocolate sauce. That's they look beautiful. Thank you. Are Teresa. we ready to serve them? We're getting of... a little restless. Are they okay? They'll love this. This will calm them right down. It's really good. The texture is good. The chocolate's great. It's light and fluffy. It's delicious. It's perfect. Wow. <laughs> First of all, it looks beautiful. You're already winning there. Oh, great, thank you. I really like the lime and a coconut combination. You don't see that very often, so I think it's uh, very good. Thank good. You. Appreciate that. Thanks. Enjoy it. The key was the feedback. I really believe in life, Dad. Whether it's positive or negative feedback, you learn from it, and that's how you can improve. Aaron's positive energy completely paid off tonight. He was unbelievable under pressure. And now, the final step on Aaron's journey, he's got to go back home and cook a delicious seafood dinner for his best friends. Because if he can please them, then he should have no problem pleasing the woman of his dreams. Aaron, you're going to be cooking a lobster and seafood linguine marinara, and you're going to make it in your own sauce from scratch, and you're going to do it by yourself this time. You actually trust me on that, well, after what I put you through. This is the point where you show us how good you are. I thought Christine was going to be helping me. Like, I thought I was a sous chef, or she was a sous chef. I'm definitely a lot more nervous now. 
I can't see. How can I cook? <laughs> the panic has definitely set in. His friends will be here shortly, and their expectations are pretty high, I think. Okay, all right. Extra wine, okay? All right. <laughs> Bleeding everywhere. Oh, jeez. Door the door. Go get the door. I'll, I'll watch for you. Go. They're here. Hello. Hey. Hey. I'm hungry, yeah? Oh, timing wise. We're not even ready yet, are we? We're not ready yet. <laughs> I'm scared, but it smells pretty good now. But I ate something, so hopefully, I'm... if there's nothing to eat, I, I'm still okay. I don't expect any food poisoning tonight, but we're close <laughs> to the hospital. But you won't feel the effect tonight, anyways. So maybe a couple days. Very good. It's really good. I'm surprised. The sauce is not overpowering the meat. Thank you. I think I'll sleep fine tonight. It's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Perfect, Aaron. Not overcooked. Good job. <laughs> I've had such a blast working with Aaron. He made an incredible dinner for his friends. They're so impressed. And you know what? I think he's ready for that woman now. Girls, anybody out there? He's fearless. I'm telling you. In the past, I wouldn't have been confident at all. It would be more about just getting takeout or catering to impress a special someone. But now that I've learned so much from this experience, I'm definitely all ready to go and looking forward to being a great cook. Visit myviva.ca slash fearlessinthekitchen.